Now we've introduced some of the more common data types in Ruby, but let's say some more about strings. When you're working with a program, you enter strings all the time. For example, when you enter an address, that's a string. You enter your name, that's a string. Or if you're entering text into a word processor, that's a string as well. Now we've seen some sort of fun things you can do with strings. For example, if you want 12 monkeys, you can write monkey times 12. That's not a very common thing to do. It's more common to do something like this, where you add two strings together to make a longer one. I'm going to say a bunch of things about strings. I'm going to go from some of the more common things to the less common. And when you get to something more obscure, if you want, you can stop and come back to this program later when you want to learn more about it. Uh, one thing that you're going to encounter rather often with strings is that you want to evaluate something in the middle of them, which in Ruby is done by typing this hash sign and then the curly brackets. So that evaluates this subtraction in the middle of the string, and the answer gets substituted into the string here. This evaluation in the middle is known as interpolation. Now, sometimes you don't want it. Sometimes you want to be able to enter something more literally. If I use single quotes, you'll notice that the interpolation does not happen. Single quotes don't do interpolation. Other than that, they're almost identical to another string. Uh, the only other difference is that, for example, you can put double quotes inside single quotes. And you can put single quotes inside double quotes. Now you'll notice when I entered a string in single quotes that it displayed it using the double quotes. This is the way IRB likes to reflect things back to you. And it puts these backslashes in front of the double quotes here. You can also enter strings like that yourself. If you want a double quote in the string, you can put the backslashes in front of it. And that's what's known as escaping for some reason. The backslash means that the next character, the following double quote, doesn't end the string, but it becomes part of the string. If you want to see what the string actually looks like when it's displayed on the screen, you can use put s. And now you can see what it really looks like. There's no quotes around it, and the double quotes appear here as part of the output. Working our way towards more obscure features, you don't have to use either single quotes or double quotes to enclose a string. Ruby lets you use almost anything, starting with a percent sign. So if you put a percent sign in an open parentheses, you can enter a string like that. You can use the parentheses, you can use square brackets like that, you can use the curly brackets like that, you can use angle brackets like that, or you can use other characters if you just repeat them, so you can use an exclamation mark. That will work as well. Now there's another funny feature around this. If you use the parentheses note that I've got parentheses inside the parentheses now normally if you start with the open parentheses you would expect this clothing closing parentheses to end the string but Ruby's a little more clever than that if it sees that you're using an opening and closing symbol like the parentheses then it looks for nested pairs like this in the middle. So this whole thing becomes part of the string. What happens if you start a string and don't close it properly? Notice that IRB tells me I'm not finished. Normally it starts a line with this angle bracket telling me, okay, we're ready to accept another piece of input. But now I've got the double quote here. That means we're still inside a string. 
so we have to finish it with another closing parenthesis. And so we get the whole string here, everything we typed, along with this funny character in the middle. When you see a backslash in front of another letter inside a string, these are special sequences that indicate special characters. In this case, a backslash n is a new line. A new line is a way of saying go down to the next line on the screen. So you notice if I use puts, you can see what the new line actually does. It prints one line here, and then it goes down and prints the next line. Let's look at just one more feature. This is even more obscure. But you can actually form a string based on a format with these substitutions in the middle. If the string contains a percent %s, for example, and you put this percent symbol after it, what you're saying is that this is a value, the string George is a value that it should insert into this percent %s. This is a substitution. Percent %d, where percent %s meant string, percent %d means decimal number. So now it expects a number as the value. And so you get my age is 37. Percent %f is a floating point number. try putting that in parentheses. There we go. Sometimes you need the parentheses to force things to evaluate in the order you want. So this is a floating point number and now you see the result substituted into the string and it shows up in this case to six decimal places. Now you can actually put modifiers into the pattern to put more information about how you want your string to be rendered. In this case, the point 2 means I just want two digits past the decimal place, so it rounds the point 347 to a point 35. So this is definitely a more obscure feature of the language, but it's nice when you want to do things like render prices.